Hi, this is Jonathan with Fishing with Faith Outdoors. Glad y'all tuned back in today. If you would, subscribe to the channel and like the videos and share it with all your friends and family. We'll greatly appreciate the support. And uh, today I'm going to talk about a technique that's been around, well, a very long time. And it was actually going to get outlawed in a couple states because it was so effective. And if you've been around bass fishing for any amount of time, you will know exactly what this is. If all the beginners, uh, we're going to talk about the Texas rig. All right. So on the Texas rig, what I pair my Texas rig up for is a, um, it's going to be a fast gear ratio, seven, five to one, um, all the way up to a, a eight, uh, gear, high speed gear ratio. Uh, typically I don't like to go under a seven, one to one, uh, simply because you got to pick up the line. All right, you want to get the slack out of your line pretty quick to set that hook. <clears throat> you can use a six five to one gear ratio if that's all you have. That you can do fine. That'll be just fine. Uh, but I highly recommend a gear uh, seven five to one or seven one to one gear ratio. Okay, <clears throat> I pair that up my gear uh, my reel up bait caster reel up with a uh, medium heavy medium heavy rod is what you want for. Uh, uh, Texas rig, okay? All right, and uh, so medium power rod with a moderate fast tip, okay? <clears throat> and the tip, you want a little softness in the tip so it won't uh, be so tough on ripping holes in the fish's mouth for setting uh, the hook. Uh, I wouldn't go anything over a fast action tip on that. Uh, but anyway, and the, uh, for beginners, <clears throat> you can get these combos at Walmart, Academy, Bass Pro. Just get you a combo. They already had it set up. I'm not sure what gear ratio reel they have, but these guys like Lou's and Abba Garcia and uh, <clears throat> those places, those uh, distributors and rods and reels, they usually have it all set up for uh, budget friendly and for uh, beginners to under, to have their first uh, rod and reel to just about do any technique, especially Texas rig. So seven five to one with a medium heavy power rod is what you want to go with your Texas rig. <clears throat> so how uh, in the line I use on my Texas rig, I use 15 pound fluorocarbon on my Texas rig. I won't go any heavier than that. And the lower side I go is, is 12 pound fluorocarbon. Okay, 100% fluorocarbon, and I use 15 pound fluorocarbon in the area I live because the water's a little dingy or stained. Um, if you live in areas where it's a little clear, uh, 12 pound will probably be just fine for you. So, uh, under, uh, so just get familiar on what line you like uh, and the area and the water clarity. So, uh, but definitely want 100% fluorocarbon because fluorocarbon sinks in a Texas rig is designed to sink into to the bottom. So a couple of them I'll share with you. I like this okay. Um, you can get this at Walmart for 10 bucks. Uh, cigar, okay, 100% fluorocarbon. <clears throat> and then um, there's a couple other brands. Let's see. Uh, Berkeley has what they call their Vanish product line. Uh, you can get this at Walmart as well. Uh, you can get the I think this is like a this is a 500 yard spool and this is somewhere this will be a 250 yard to 300 yard spool okay so those are two fluorocarbons i use you just figure out what you like and uh and what works best for you i'm not going to say you on any specific item i'm not sponsored by nobody and um until that happens uh we'll cross that bridge when that comes along all right so on my worms, I typically use just about anything you can think of for Texas rig. Creature baits, big old monsters. Okay. Uh, zoo trick worm, you name it. Any kind of soft plastic you can just about use on the Texas rig. All right. <clears throat> so that's what I do with that. Uh, you can also use um, different swim baits and stuff for Texas rigs. Um, I don't have one right here. Uh, there's a brand called, uh, here it is, the Berkeley Gilly. 
you can Texas rig that as well. All right, very nice boat. And I've caught a couple big bass in that deal. But anyway, so how I rig my Texas rig. Well, the first things first, let's talk about, you got the, we got the line out of the way. And the next thing you're gonna need is a bullet weight. All right, so anything that's from one foot to five foot, I, I use a one eighth or less sinker. Okay, I won't go no heavier than that in that foot of range um, of water. So one to five feet, a one eighth sinker. Okay, that's what I typically use depending on my bait. Um, especially with big old monster, it's already got a, a little bit of weight to it, not very much, and then paired that up with a hook, that's going to fall pretty decent. And uh, so, uh, and also too, that. Uh, <clears throat> and the next one is uh, anywhere from five to ten feet. I use a quarter, quarter, somewhere between three sixteenths to five sixteenths bullet weight okay um, you can use three sixteenths in less than 10 feet say that five to there five to two foot the three sixteenths sinker okay um, but if anything over five feet i'm going to use a quarter to five sixteenths bullet weight okay and anything past 10 feet go to three eighths to a half okay all right so hopefully y'all understand that one and um and when I thread my bullet weight on, I want the nose point to go towards the tip of the rod on my line. All right, I want the point to go towards, on my line, towards the tip of the rod. That's how you put that on. All right, <clears throat> so now let's talk about the hook. I typically use extra wide gap hook, EWG. I like that, okay? Um, you can use a worm hook, what I call an offset worm hook. And I'll show you what that looks like here. <clears throat> That's an offset worm hook. Either one of these is great. The one, the one thing I will tell you is if you have a thick plastic, you want to want an EWG, extra wide gap. A worm, any style worm, will usually work on it on an offset worm hook. Okay. And two, on your worm, you don't want to put a big hook where it's taken up, let's say, all right, so this is a three aught. This is a three aught. No, that's a four aught. Let's get a three aught, because that's what I use the most is a three aught. So I got a three aught hook. I don't want to, a three aught hook, you see how much worm that's taken up on a, uh, this is a, a culprit, uh, I believe it's like a seven inch, six inch worm. But you see how big that three aught is in that worm? You don't want to use anything any bigger than that, okay? I typically like to use a two aught in a six inch worm to make sure it ain't taking up all the plastic, okay? Because if you put too much hook in a plastic, it takes all the action out. So six inch, uh, anything that's six inches or less, I use a two aught to one aught hook. Anything greater than seven inches, I'll use a three aught a five aught, a four aught, and a five aught hook. So like a big old monster, you can get away with three aught hook, but a big old monster, 10 inch, 12 inch worm, you wanna use a four aught or a five aught hook in that worm, okay? All right, I just use a four aught, that's generally what I stick with, okay? Cause I can use it on a rise range of other things. A five aught hook is generally too big for anything else. So the four aught is really the biggest I go in the beginning. And I haven't had, haven't had no problems. When that fish hits it, you'll feel a thump. Give it a few seconds, set the hook. If it don't even have all the way in his mouth, it'll rip the tail off or you pull it out of his mouth. That happens every once in a while. Um, but generally on a four aught hook and a big monster, uh, zoom big monster, couple thumps give it a few seconds real down set the hook and it's got it no problems there all right so like i said uh yeah six inch seven inch worm i wouldn't go no i wouldn't go no more than a three off hook all right so we got that um so let's show y'all how to thread this on all right <clears throat> 
So I'll get my three aught hook here, or four aught hook here. Uh, I like the EWG, but I'll show you on the offset worm hook as well. So you want to take your worm hook. You see how the bend stops right there? See that bend stops right there, top of my fingernail? All right, right there. So I want to set that into the worm like this right here. All the way up to that bend. And there'll be like a flat side on most worms. You'll see a flat, smooth side. Okay, that's what that's the, that's the part I want facing towards the shank of the hook. All right, so then I'll pop it out about a quarter of way down. Uh, quarter, three-eighths, I wouldn't go no more than that. And push it through and come to where these little bends are, and I'm going to twist it right there and then pop it onto the eye. I like my worm to go over the where I tied the hook on, and I think that's something I failed to mention on the hook tie. The hook tie is going to be on fluorocarbon. It's going to be a Palomar knot, and I'll leave a, a video in the description below on how to tie that knot. All right, so I like my worm to kind of go over the hook tie. That way the weight ain't hitting the tie. It's hitting on the nose of the worm. Okay, I'm going to gauge the hook right there. So I'm going to pinch it and push it through. All right, see how nice and straight that is? All right, so you can fish it with an open hook if you're not fishing around any cover. It's just open water. You can drag it on the bottom of like that. But if you're around cover or think you're going to get hung, take your worm, push it up to the hook, push it forward, push it up to the hook, push it forward, and what they call text pose. Okay, text pose the hook into the back of the worm. And that makes it weedless. And so make sure everything's nice and straight. That way it comes through the water straight, okay? You don't want it to come through the water looking like a... I'm not saying it won't get bites, but nine out of, uh, eight out of ten times it will turn a fish off because it don't look natural. So you want your work, you want your worm straight, okay? And it's text posed, all right? So that makes that, that, makes that weedless. So I run my hand across there and I'm gonna get the hood to come through cover and brush just as uh, just just as uh, smooth as, as you can as you want. Alright, so that's the offset worm hook. And the EWG is just the same. It's the same deal. Um, the only difference is the EWG hook is the top of it is almost directly in line with the line tie. Uh, so I do it the same way. I go down to the bend. Alright. Pop it out, come through, spin, and pop it over my eye, or well, close as I can to the eye. Gauge it, okay, and then pop it through. All right, <clears throat> just like that. Then I want to text pose it for a weedless. And there's your weedless Texas rig. So that's all it is to that. It's very simple. You can do all kinds of baits that way. Um, you know, you got creature baits and that such. Um, <clears throat> so you got like the Rage Menace. You want to send a Rage Menace. You do it the same way when you Texas rig. So, um, sorry, it's a Rage Crawl. Rage Crawl by Strike King. So, Pop it in, spin it around, all right, now gauge, I gauge my hook, push it through, then I want to text pose the hook, make it weedless. So the same deal on your, on your text, on your Texas rear creature baits, you do the same thing, okay? All right, so that's, the, that's the gist on that. Um, the only other thing I got to add as far as uh, the Texas rig deal, uh, colors, how you select your colors. Generally what I do, if it's, if it's two and a half feet or less, a darker color is what I'm gonna use. Any kind of darker solid color is what I'm gonna use, okay? If it is three foot, greater invisibility in the water column in the water clarity 
than more natural colors I'm going to use. Anything that's a little bit more translucent or, um, you know, um, green pumpkins, watermelon seeds, that kind of thing. Um, you can go with, uh, you know, you got a, you know, red bulb will work great in clear water or clearish water. Uh, <clears throat> all kinds of stuff. You got the culprit makes a line of different baits. And this is something I'll use in a clear water. You can probably get away with this one in, in, in stainer waters too. I think that's called a uh, tomato sauce or something. So that's what you want to do. Um, and then in darker waters, or here's another, that's a, I think it's a watermelon color. <clears throat> and in darker waters, you can use bright colors. You got different colors for brightness because they'll shine in that dark, in that um, stained water. You got some that's got tails on them that's bright, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, this is a water, this is a motor oil with a chartreuse tail. Okay, so again, darker waters, stained waters, my darker colors. Anything greater than three feet, anything that's three feet or greater, I'm gonna go with natural colors. All right, so I hope I covered everything and uh, on the Texas rig deal. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll answer them best I can. If I forgot anything, please comment on that and we'll go over that as well. I appreciate y'all watching and remember, Jesus saves. Okay, His love, He died for every human that ever lived. And there ain't no special ones. That every man and every woman can come to Jesus and ask for forgiveness and build to get to heaven. Okay, so any questions about that, please comment on that and I'll answer them the best I can. And, um, or get with your lo local pastor. And uh, that will be a great service to God to come and know and trust him and serve him. But thank you all for watching again. Please like and subscribe and share with all your friends. And until the next one, God bless and thank you.